It's likely we'll never know exactly what King Charles and Keir Starmer talked about during their Buckingham Palace meeting today, with protocol meaning the details are meant to be kept secret by both parties. However we do know that during the historic meeting the monarch asked the Labour leader to officially become Prime Minister and to form a government. A series of official photographs were released to mark the visit, taken before the doors were closed and the two men sat down to talk privately. But according to body language expert Judy James, some of their gestures in the snaps hint at what they might have been saying during the photo call. She tells The Mirror, the initial pose of the new PM's meeting with the king shows Starmer lowering his head and upper torso slightly in an act of respect as he steps forward to greet him, although the handshake between the two men already looks firm and friendly. The poses from that point though show an unusual proximity between them as they continue to clasp hands and chat, almost like established friends. At one point Charles even performs the lowered point, using his index finger in a signature gesture to suggest he is sharing a moment of humor. Follow the latest election news on our live blog, which has all the updates as Labour celebrates its landslide victory. When the two men sit side by side it's now Starmer performing the non-verbal signals of power and status via the politician's trick of being the one using the emphatic hand gesticulation as they talk. A submissive approach would be to face, watch the king to listen and react but Starmer's hand gesture suggests it's him making the big point here while Charles sit listening comfortably. Starmer is the king's third prime minister in just three years. The late queen had just 15 in her 70-year reign. His first was Liz Truss, who was in power when he took the throne in September 2022. However she didn't stay for day long, and was replaced by Rishi Sunak just a few weeks later. After the meeting, Starmer was driving down the mall into Downing Street for the first time as Prime Minister. He then gave his first official speech outside Number 10. He said, Our country has voted decisively for change, for national renewal and a return of politics to public service. When the gap between the sacrifices made by people and the service they receive from politicians grows this big it leads to a weariness in the heart of a nation, a draining away of the hope, the spirit, the belief in a better future, that we need to move forward together. Now, this wound this lack of trust, can only be healed by actions, not words. I know that. But we can make a start today, with the simple acknowledgement that public service is a privilege and that your government should treat every single person in this country with respect. If you voted Labour yesterday, we will carry the responsibility of your trust as we rebuild our country. But whether you voted Labour or not, in fact, especially if you did not, I say to you directly, my government will serve you. Politics can be a force for good. We will show that. Webb changed the Labour Party, returned it to service and that is how we will govern, country first, party second.